Good morning from the Walmart parking lot here in Elkhart, Indiana. Today we are visiting the RVMH Hall of Fame, but before we do that, we are going to drive a short distance to the Michigan border. You know, to take a picture with the state sign. And here we are. Indiana. We are on our way to the Recreational Vehicle and Manufactured Housing Hall of Fame in Elkhart, Indiana. A pilgrimage, really. A must-see place for any RVer, at least once. Their mission, preserving the history and honoring the pioneers and individuals who have made significant contributions to the RV and manufactured housing industries. And you can actually park overnight here, but we decided to stay at the Walmart. First, we have the Go RVing Hall. And we begin with this uh, model of uh, an RV manufacturing plant. Here we see travel trailers and fifth wheels at different stages of manufacturing. And here we have a new Shasta trailer, its design reminiscent of the canned ham design of the 1950s and 1960s. This one, however, is quite nice inside, and it has many of the modern amenities. Let's take a look at the original, a 15-foot 1954 Shasta. This is really vintage 1954 Shasta. By the way, no bathroom in any of these older units. Here we are inside another vintage trailer. A 1964 Mallard, 13 feet in length. And here we have a 2016 Winnebago Vista, 31 feet long. And the only reason I am showing you this actually is because if we ever wanted to go big, this would probably be it for us. I really like the floor plan <laughs> and I feel like I am at an RV show now. As you can see, it has ample counter space in the kitchen. And I guess they have this here to show how much RVs have really improved. This one has a couch and a TV in front of it, which is such a simple ergonomic convenience that so many RV manufacturers overlook. Bunk bed over the cab. Many people say you shouldn't fixate on the floor plan, but I think it's very important. It's where you're gonna live. Holding tank capacity and storage are also very important, and this one has those too. It's a Cougar fifth wheel. Let's move on and see a modern fifth wheel. Lots of slides out, lots of slide outs. And this is very, very much residential, as you can see. Well, we've seen them in the RV show, but might as well show you here. Even in the house, although the kitchen is kind of rinky dinky. And then back here, of course, very nice bathroom with lots of storage and the bedroom. Little pop up. There's a happy camper wine. All right, let's move on to the main floor. And the first thing we see is a 1913 trailer, the oldest unit here. Commissioned by Mr. Earl, a botanist, who wanted a more comfortable tent with a pantry and a wardrobe and something that he could pull with his Model T Ford. 
Next, here we have a 1915 Model T with what they called a telescope apartment, built in 1916. This is light out. <laughs> yeah, slide outs are not a new invention. 1916 telescope apartment. Looks comfortable enough. It fits in the back of a Model T runabout. Skipping ahead, here in the timeline, this is a 1958 22-foot Airstream Flying Cloud. And as you can see, this is very nice. It has a phone and a sofa, full kitchen. And it looks like a bedroom and a bathroom in the back. Too bad we cannot go inside. The heater has a chimney, just like the Kimberly Just Incredible has. It's a tent with wheels. This very cool looking unit is a custom made 1931 model AA Ford house car. The original seat was actually just a wooden bench. And look at all the amenities in the back of this Great Depression era motorhome. Very cool. In Kimberly. Here's a look from the other side. Now here we are looking at a 1932 tent trailer, which had a very innovative pass-through icebox and pantry, so that you could access them, even if the tent was folded down. And here's a 1935 covered wagon trailer. A covered wagon was actually the largest manufacturer of trailers at the time. As you can see, well, things haven't changed all that much, have they? Except there is no bathroom yet. And this was the first travel trailer built by Fleetwood. Even in the 50s, some of these units were still rather simple. I mean, look at the size of that. Here we are inside a 1954 Holiday Rambler travel trailer. And we've got a fridge. Very cute, these uh, canned ham uh, design trailers. I still find it baffling that none of these older units have bathrooms. To me, that's like the number one feature to have in an RV. Having your own toilet. Yellowstone travel trailer. Very cool. Nineteen fifty seven teardrop. Now we are talking. But here we have jumped to 1985, a Fleetwood Bounder prototype, very similar to the iconic RV in the Breaking Bad TV series. 1985 Fleetwood Bounder. This was actually the first motorhome to have basement storage. That's the fridge, the medic. 1966 Mustang. Ooh, this one has a bathtub. This is a 1967, a couple of years before they didn't even include toilets and now we have a whole bathtub. I would call that progress. And now this is a Class C motorhome. It's actually pretty comfortable. It looks almost the way they look nowadays, sort of. Uh, check out the vintage panel though, very cool. The levels. <laughs> Bathroom in the back. 1978 Coachman Leprechaun Class C. Okay, this is really antique, and it has a bathroom. Mm -hmm. 
This is actually one of several vehicles built by Hollywood cinematographer and producer Roy Hunt in the 1930s. And this one is called the Star because of the hood ornament. A 1937 house car. It kind of looks like an old Citroen. 1937 house car. Fleetwood's first motorhome. 1969 Pace Arrow. Let's take a look inside. It is actually very nice. We could see ourselves living here. 1936 Road Home Coach. It has a bathtub. This is huge. This is a 1954 Spartan mobile home. It has like a real bathroom. Bunks. The oven. GE refrigerator. And then living area. All in here, 1954. Uh, they had the goal to call it a Spartan. Yep, the 18 by 42 feet long Spartan Imperial Mansion. Studebaker truck. And here's a very cool unit, built in 1988, using a 1976 Cadillac chassis and an Oldsmobile Tornado engine. It was designed to fit in a regular size car garage. And here we have the legendary 1935 Baulus Roadship, built out of riveted aluminum. It was created by William Holly Baulus, a sailplane and glider builder and he applied the same aerodynamics he used to build planes. This unit is very light too, only 1100 pounds. Wally Byam, an employee of his, took all this knowledge and went on to found Airstream. 1969, the precursor to the Class C motorhome. It was like a truck camper, just more integrated into the chassis. Mounted directly on the chassis, look at that dash, cool. This was made by the Stites Camper Company. Come over bed, a little wet bath, and living area. 1974 GMC, like the one uh, Wanderlust Estate travels in. Like the big windows. Yeah, this is nice. GMC. And this is a class A motorhome any RV enthusiast will recognize. The original 1967 Winnebago motorhome. This was very cool. The GMC back there, the original Winnebago. All right, let's go.
Outside the museum, uh, they have this 1977 Travco 32 foot Class A motorhome based on a Dodge chassis. Rear AC has two AC units. In fact, it looks very much like a modern motorhome. Say that 10 times. And with that, we say goodbye to the RVMH Hall of Fame. I hope you enjoyed it, but we're not done yet. We're going to Chicago. Chicago, pretty much the midpoint in our uh, epic road trip and the northernmost point of that trip as well. And by the way, beware, gas in Indiana is expensive. We just uh, filled up at what, 270 I think, 269, something like that. Granted it was at the service plaza so it was a little like 10 cents more than the regular gas station but buy everywhere. See you in Chicago. And we're stuck in traffic once again. Two miles before South Bend. They have a lane blocked off due to road construction. Okay, let's get off Interstate 90. Cha-ching! $9.30 because of our four axles. Let's take I-94 West towards Chicago, but not so fast. A couple of viewers suggested that I visit the Indiana Dunes National Lakeshore, where on a clear day you can see the Chicago skyline across the lake. And today seems to me clear enough. There is a $6 fee to enter the park, and camping is $18 per night. I can see the lake, let's park and check it out. And it is true, there it is, Chicago on the horizon. This is, by the way, Lake Michigan. So vast, it looks like an ocean. You know, I really wish we had added this place to our original plan. For one, I have never swum at a freshwater beach. I guess those must be the famous sand dunes. Okay, while well, I would have preferred to spend more time here, Chicago awaits. Let's find uh, the dump station, you know, get our six dollars worth, because we are going to spend the next couple of nights dry camping in the Windy City. Another toll, $1.70. We are going to take the Chicago Skyway. At the state line, we don't get a Welcome to Illinois sign. Instead, we just get a sign that says Welcome to Chicago.
one last stall. This one is a whopping $20.20. Ouch. Okay, I'm just going to let the camera roll here as we approach downtown. So, if you are coming to Chicago with an RV, you know where to park. We're going to stay at the truck marshalling lot at the McCormick Convention Center, which charges $35 for overnight parking as of summer of 2016. I believe it is the cheapest way to stay in the Windy City. Well, that's all folks, uh, do remember to subscribe if you haven't, and if you liked it, uh, well, give me a thumbs up and share with your friends and comment below. I am also on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and even Snapchat, so follow me there too if you will. I am now Traveling Robert in all of the social networks, and you can also visit the blog at TravelingRobert.com, join the mailing list. As always, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road. I'm riding. Riding with my RV Wherever I want to be Cause I'm free in my RV